All right, welcome to another YouTube exclusive on the Free Fork Rock. Fuck off podcast. No, I'm joking. <laughs> What's up, guys? I wasn't telling you guys to fuck up. I was just trying to be stupid. I am stupid, uh, but whatever. I like when people try to be stupid because a lot of people are stupid without even trying. I like when people really try to be stupid. <laughs> Remember the Weird Al song? Uh, um, dare to be stupid. Yeah. Dare to be stupid. Dare to be stupid. Uh, did I you ever weird. see? Did you ever see that Memorial Day, um, special that he did? It was like three or four hours on MTV. Where he took over he, the MTV. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was like he did like a three or four hour special thing where he was the host on MTV for those four hours. And he had stuff where there was like maybe a video and if there was like a lady in the video and it showed a little bit of her leg or some, he, he inserted a real quick moment of a nerdy guy who's going, <laughs> you know, and stuff like that. And, 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 and it was hilarious. And I think I recorded it, but, or I wanted to record it, but. It was Labor Day. He said, this is my favorite uh, holiday of all time, Labor Day. This is back around maybe 1985, maybe. It, 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 was, it, it, was, it, it was really um, hilarious. And I wish I could get that whole thing on video because he... he <laughs> it was insanely funny. Probably up on YouTube. I, I might want. I, I might look for it on YouTube. You know, no, I, I haven't thought of that. I remember that it was like he was like pirate radio taking over MTV, and it, and he called it Al TV. Remember? Yeah, that <laughs> remember. was it. Yeah, he he's like. He's like took. You saw the screen shaking, and he goes, "Ah, it's weird, Al Yankovic. It's Al TV now." <laughs> yeah, that was that. it. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Do you like him with or without the mustache? I think he looks weird without a mustache now. Um, I think that he looks younger without it, but he looks like a totally different guy. Like if it was him and his housemate that lived in the same apartment together and you say hi is al home and his housemate answers and says i'm al and you go no you're not al get al for me i want to see al and he goes i am al and you go well you don't look like him that's sort of the impression that i had when i saw him he he looks he looks totally younger and different and a little bit weirder i prefer him with the mustache have you heard any of his newer material um no but i i've heard that he still sells out places that are like big places where he performs that people still like him and <laughs> he's he's apparently still doing really well that's what i heard <laughs> he did a pharrell song called happy and changed it to tacky because i'm tacky <laughs> you know tacky. yeah and he's okay. even doing the same kind of same video that pharrell did for happy and he's doing tacky yeah. and he has all these stars dancing in it with him and he pushes them out of the way <laughs> It takes over for them. Okay, I'll I'll take a look. I'll send you the, I'll send you the video because he goes because I'm tacky. And you know that song Royals that was by that one girl. There's a song called Royals. Let Royals. Yeah, it was a song. Let me see who did Royals. Uh, he did a version of that, which I think he would love. It's by Lord. It's a, a lady called Lord. He did a version Lord? called Lord. Lord. He did a version of that called Tinfoil. Yeah, I 
Lord is someone who I've wanted to listen to and I haven't much. Well, he did a version of her song Royals and called it Tinfoil. And it's about him wearing, it's all about tinfoil. <laughs> <laughs> he rapid things of tinfoil. And at the end, he wears a tinfoil hat. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. That sounds pretty funny. I, I, I think I'll listen to him. You know, not all of his songs are parodies. He's also done some original songs. Oh, I, I think it would be interesting if someone a group out there did one of his original songs that wasn't a parody why don't you do it do a video of you doing one of his original songs that's actually an interesting idea i i i forget which songs they are i'll have to look at his albums and and find one but yeah but yeah he he he's done He's done regular material too. It's not what he's known mostly for, but he's done it. Yeah, he said. Yeah, he that's said. A good I'll, idea. Thank you. He said a song called "I'll Sue Ya," "Weasel Stomping Day," "Bob," "One More Minute," "Virus Alert." Yeah. Uh, Talk soup. The boy that could dance. The biggest ball of twine in Minnesota. The checks in the mail. The night Santa went crazy. <laughs> the Weird Al show theme. This yeah. is life. Traffic jam. And he's got a lot of original songs, man. I'm looking it up right now. Yeah. Buy me a condo. <laughs> you know, cable TV. Calling in sick. Close but no cigar. <laughs> it's funny. Craigslist. Okay. He did a song called Craigslist too. <laughs> I'm getting owl rules, man. But uh, speaking of uh, some guy who uh, did a parody does parodies but a guy who did a parody of himself what do you think of vince neal trying to get back up and singing girls 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 the other day i didn't see it the reason i didn't see it was because i figured it was going to be pretty bad and i didn't <laughs> want to waste my time he had the right tone his tone was there but he wasn't singing it really that good and he stopped in the middle and said look guys my voice is gone i haven't been up here much and the band kept playing and then the band had to, and he walked off stage and the band had to make like they were singing the background vocals. They were going, girls, girls, girls. But the thing is, it, they were lip singing the background, but they didn't want to get caught. So they acted like they were still singing because the track was still going. <laughs> um, one thing that I want to know is, did he look like he was getting in shape or did he look really big? He looked like he lost some weight, but not that much. He was still a little bit fat, but that doesn't matter. Meatloaf was a fat. But no, no. I mean, the reason is because there was a video of him um, with his trainer a while back saying that he was getting in shape. So, so did it look like he made some effort? It looked like he made some effort from when I saw him on Sammy okay. Hagar's show like a year ago. But uh, he's got another year for the uh, stadium show to get in shape. And I hopefully he does because that would be horrible if I'm watching and he walks off in the middle of the song and a band is still lip singing the background vocals. He, Vince was not lip singing. He even said his voice went out and he walked off and said sorry to them. But the background, the guitar players got up and went, girls, girls, girls. And you know, it was taken from the album, Girls, Girls, Girls. It was so perfect. Yeah. It can't be, it, it sounded like the Motley Crue background vocals. You know what I heard? I had heard that when David Lee Roth was in tour this last time, that he used background vocals recorded from Michael Anthony and that um, Eddie Trunk mentioned to Michael Anthony that there were people who said that they saw the show and that there were Michael Anthony vocals and Michael Anthony said really well maybe I ought to contact Dave and get some royalties there and he he said it in a funny like you know laughing way but he he didn't know well if and the original singer is singing live and they just have some like show me background vocals i'm okay with that it doesn't bug me as much as like when the singer is lip singing like paul stanley that just irritates me 
Um, I'm mostly irritated if when I'm seeing a group that I have to pay a hell of a lot of money for. Um, the vocalist sounds really squeaky, like like someone shut a car door on his fingers and he goes, ah! You know, that to me, um, I, um, I, I, um, overall, most of the groups that I've seen live, I've been okay with. When I saw Van Halen, the opening group was called After the Fire, and they did their own English version of the song Der Commissar that Falco did. I Don't Falco. turn around, Der Commissar's in town. That's uh -oh. After the Fire. Yeah. And um, Falco did the original version, but After the Fire did the um, other version. And um, they played live and um, everyone booed them. And then they finally, one of the guys, the guitarist, took like some toilet paper or something, threw it in the audience to say, fuck all of you. And, and then they all booed them more. But they weren't bad, but, but, but they didn't sound, I mean, I mean they, they, they were just kind of dumb. But they did an album before that that was like a progressive rock album that maybe we ought to do sometime. There was another group that, that I saw. I was at my prom. The group was called The Edge. It, it, they they um, did like an album that was like kind of like new wave-ish, sort of like the knack. And, um, but they played at my prom. And, and then I looked up their information and the drummer was in a group called Savage Inter, no, Savage, no, the Savage Resurrection. I thought you were going to say Savage Garden. Out. I go, Ooh. huh? I thought you were going to say Savage Garden for a second. I go, no, 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 no. Oh, God. Don't don't get me started on that crap. Right on. We both we should just review that album so we can take a shit on it. <laughs> I'd be into it, but 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 the thing is, Savage Resurrection. Um, the thing is, the 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 drummer was in that group, and they were a cool group back in the '60s. And I had an album of, and they were good. But the Edge. It's like if I look for their album, that's like such a basic name. It's like The Thing or um, The Stuff. It's like, how can you find it? But if I can find it, they did a, a like at least an album or a EP. And they were kind of okay. I'd be into doing a review of one of their of their album. Um, that that was probably in print for a minute, and I, I, I saw it, and and then it pro probably got thrown out of the shop and destroyed by the weed whacker. But anyway, you know. Dude, I have so many local record shops that I could go to um, here. I need to start like going to them again. Um, I've been to uh, Rhino Records over here in uh, Claremont. And Rhino That's Records, cool. 
and I they had albums up on the the top like they had Beach Boys Pet Sounds original mint for two thousand dollars. I go, eh, no, <laughs> um, it's not worth it. I, I would like to review a Beach Boys album though, and a Monkeys album one day though. I'd love to do a Beach Boys and a Monkeys album, and I, I'm, I'm, um, I'd be into, um, I, I, I like the Beach Boys earlier period, like either Surfing Safari, Surfer Girl, or Surfing USA, or Little Deuce Coop, or Shut Down Volume Two, or um, even. Summer Days and Summer Nights is a good album. I love Beach Boys, man. I even like Co- I, I even like Kokomo. Summer Days and Summer Nights. That's that's a pretty hip album, and I love listening to their early stuff when they're when I'm drunk. Their Dude. stuff is fucking right on when you're drunk. Their harmonies the are on fire, man. Huh? Their harmonies are on fire. Yeah, and and the monkeys any album by the monkeys but i would prefer if i had my preference either one of the first five albums either the first one the monkeys or the second one more of the monkeys or monkeys headquarters or pisces aquarius capricorn and jones limited or the birds, the bees, and the monkeys. I grew up with that stuff. I had their albums before anybody else in my class had them. I was looking at the year in rock in 1967. They had two albums in the top 10 that for the year that were like number one and number four, I think, that were pretty high up there. And I was like, dang, I didn't know the monkeys are that popular. It's fun shit. <laughs> um Back in the day, they w- well, when when their first album came out, I uh, it's weird because um, I was born in '65, so I was either one or two, depending upon the year that it came out. But I remember watching the show and thinking that they were probably. It's it's weird because I don't remember. I mean, I, I I remember listening to groups and stuff when I was a young kid, back when I was one and two. But I can't remember if I saw the Monkey Show back then. I remember watching the Beatles cartoon when I was about two or three, and I might have been four or five, but the Beatles had a cartoon. Did, did you ever see Smokey the Bear cartoons? I saw Smokey the Bear and Woodsy Owl, but I don't know if I saw the cartoons. Um, um, you mean you saw probably the commercials, right? The commercials, yeah. Yeah. There was a, there was a um, show. There was a cartoon of Smokey the Bear that I saw when I was about maybe two or three. And it was pretty cool. It was a lot like the commercials, but it was at least each episode about like 10 minutes or so. It was it was pretty hot. I liked it. And yeah, the, um, only, the only bear I remember watching was Yogi Bear. Hell boo boo. Oh, let's, I love Yogi let's Bear. Let's go get a picnic a busket. I love ah, Yogi. Yogi. Ranger Smith ain't gonna like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, there was um some some other show I'm I'm trying to think of that I can't remember right now, so I won't even. I, oh, Casper the Friendly Ghost. Oh, I love Casper the Friendly Ghost. I even like the new movie they made in the nineties. I thought that was really good. The early Casper the Friendly Ghost, the really early ones from the 60s. Really good. I've seen all those. I really love those. He, he was like, like, you know, attacking dragons and monsters. 
he was like almost like Superman. Mm -hmm. But then they did the new Casper the Friendly Ghost around maybe the early 80s. And he played this wimp little ghost that said, I have no one to play with. Oh, it's it's uh, like when, oh, when he had his three brothers fucking with him the whole time. Yeah, yeah. And then that yeah. wasn't the original. The original was like, I'm going to get rid of these monsters. I'm. It was like a superhero kind of a thing. The, the, the shit that you saw later, the new cast for the Friendly Ghost was was dumb. I mean, it, I saw it, but the original, he was a powerhouse ghost and he was getting rid of um, monsters and stuff. Dragons I, I, and all sorts of stuff. You have to see the old Casper well, from like... I, I kind of like, get, get what you're saying because they ruined Scooby-Doo and they brought in uh, Puppy. Puppy power! Fuck that puppy. Fuck Scrappy-Doo. Oh, yeah. Scrappy-Doo is horrible. And then they made the movie and they made Scrappy the, the, the bad guy. That was awesome. <laughs> they, took off the, they took off the mask and it was Scrappy. <laughs> I was like, yeah! That's funny. Yeah. It's, I, I think it was the first Scooby-Doo movie they made with Matthew Lillard playing uh, Scrappy. Uh, Shaggy, he was a perfect scrap. Shaggy, he even did the voice of scrap of Shaggy in the newer cartoons, which is cool. I used to love the Scooby Doo with the uh, where they had the fucking uh, Batman and Robin in there and fucking oh. uh, uh, Abbott and Costello. That was fucking cool. And the three oh, Stooges, yeah, I remember that stuff. Scooby Doo movies, I think it was called Scooby Doo movies, but I hated it when they brought Scrappy in because they took out. Vel Velma and fucking Daphne and Fred. They took them out and it was just uh, Shaggy, Scooby, and fucking Scrappy fucking do. Ew. It sucked. I needed the mystery machine, man. Fuck that shit. Fuck it. And, and, yeah. you, know, you know what's funny? Before I get into my rant here, um, if we do a monkeys episode, since I have no contact with him, but me and him get along, uh, ask Ken Mills if you'd like to do a monkeys episode with us, because he's a huge monkeys fan. Um, you want me to ask him? Yeah, whenever, if he'd want to do it. If not, I'm okay with it. But just ask him. But the thing about Scooby-Doo, man, I love Scooby-Doo, but they made new movies that, I don't know, like Sco Scooby and Kiss. It, it, it's not the same, man. I don't know if I'm old saying, get off my lawn, motherfuckers. I like the old Scooby-Doo. But I was like that in the 80s when they brought Scrappy-Doo in here. I go, what the fuck is this Scrappy fucking do? I'm going to go watch Thunder the Barbarian. Fuck this shit. <laughs> yeah. You know, I haven't seen that new Scooby-Doo movie with Kiss. Yeah. I'm thinking it probably sucks. It probably does. I want to see it so I can make fun of it. But I, I, it doesn't have Ace in it. It's fucking Tommy Thayer and fucking... Okay, yeah. whatever. But you know what? You're talking about the Beatles. Remember, um, remember fucking, I don't know if they did their voices for their own cartoon because they didn't do the voices in the Yellow Submarine. It was other people doing their voices until the end. They brought in really? the real video. Yeah, the Beatles didn't do the voices until, remember, at the end they saw them, saw the real Beatles in black and white. You saw them talking uh, at the end. I didn't see the whole movie, but I, 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 no, wait, I I think I did when I was four. I thought I I loved it, but I didn't. I saw the movie Help, and um. Hey, Phil Collins was, was in Help, wasn't he? Movie. Wasn't he in Help or Hard Day's Night? Phil Collins was in there like a man on the train. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, Phil Collins was in a Help, one of the Beatles movies. Let me look it up so we could be cool on this shit phil collins beatles movie um but yeah, I, I i i watched help i watched i think i think i love that that yellow submarine was a really really weird movie and i loved it oh, i love it too i used to have it on dvd when they re released it um i saw jack bruce live you know, the basses from Cream. Yeah. And on the loudspeaker, they had the Yellow Submarine soundtrack played loud. 
and I and I heard it loud, and it was like, wow, this is trippy good stuff. Phil Collins was an extra in the Hard Day's Night movie. Oh, okay. I I I saw a little bit of that movie, but I didn't really see it. Yeah, he was an extra in there. So that's cool. But you know what also pisses me off? Genesis is coming to do a tour in the United States, North American tour. They're not in fucking coming to Los Angeles yet. And I'm fucking, come on, schedule that shit. I'm there. I'm fucking, I want to see them. I, I saw that they're coming into New York. They are. They added an extra show. But I already saw them back in the 80s. But I didn't see them. But I did, so I don't need to see them. But I saw Phil Collins in a Not Dead Yet tour about two, three years ago. He was, he, you know, he had spinal surgery, right, on his neck. Yeah. He can't really play the drums. So he, he came out on a cane and sat in a chair, and he sang all the songs perfect. And his son, 17-year-old son at that time, played all Phil Collins' drums. And his son fucking was on point with every That's fucking cool. drum. He sounds just like Phil and his son. Phil said, if I'm going back to Genesis, my son needs to play drums because I still can't do it. But he said, Phil has said yeah. that he's getting better and he might get up there and play with his son on a couple songs. You know, like they That's used to do, cool. with, like they used to do in Genesis with the uh, black drummer. I forgot his name. He played on all the Thompson. Yeah, he played, like he used to go back there and jam with him. He's going to do that. But Phil did get up on in front of the drum set and did bongos in one song and it was pretty cool that's cool yeah it was really good man i enjoyed that show and he sounded so good his voice is still there man and he did a couple genesis songs but he did the weaker ones he did throwing it all away throwing it all away you know he didn't do yeah. like fucking uh turn it on turn it on turn it on again i love that shit that one's cool i i love that song yeah i love fucking that i love phil collins i've In always fact, loved phil. when i saw them live i said i want them to do that as the encore and they did it as the encore okay i just like it when he goes i i feel so lonely when she's not there and he goes did they do it as the encore I, no, they did it in the middle of a gen in the concert in the like but a couple. Believe of it or not, I said if they do it as the encore, that's the that's what I want, and He's, they did it. He still had that one bassist with the long beard playing with him. He played with like, um, do, do Mike Butter? Rutherford. No, Mike Rutherford doesn't have a long beard. Oh, Leland Sklar. Yes, him. He was there playing. Yeah, he's really good. He's like he's been on a lot of like Jackson Brown albums and shit. We haven't done Jackson yeah, Brown. Yeah, he's been around a long time. I love Jackson Brown, man. But fuck, I love Phil Collins, and I want to see Genesis so bad. It just, oh God, I hope they come to L.A. or fucking San Bernardino or fucking yeah. Orange County, somewhere I could see them, man. I also want to see Clutch. Clutch is going on tour, and they have no dates here either. Like fuck. Oh, you liked Clutch. You were okay with them. Yeah, I do. Shut up. <laughs> well, I no, know no, you're good. No, they're, they're, they're good. I know your uh, Steve Winwood Steely Dan tour got uh, pushed back again. It, it's, it's, it's for next year. It's like I have to wait another whole year for it. It's like, you know, it, 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 it keeps getting pushed back another year, another year. Yeah, we haven't done a Steely Dan album yet or a Steve Winwood album, dude. We need to do one of those. Um, all right. Um, I know what Steve Winwood album I want to do. Um, I'll have to think about what Steely Dan album I want to do because there's maybe three or four. <laughs> that are on my um to-do list and and i have to kind of juggle which one would you want i just don't want to do that that newer one they did two against nature i didn't kind of like that one that much i don't even know that one um, yeah that's I, the I, comeback I, album I to do it yeah i wouldn't want to i like we did donald fagan which was a sunken treasures yeah 
that was a good album. I love yeah, Donald. I Perry. um um yeah um I can text you or tell you offline which Steve Winwood album so that the people can be surprised so that they don't have to be like, you know, hearing what pick I have now I, I just want to know why steve winwood is so fucking underrated in rock and roll why nobody talks about steve winwood it's it's probably because he was known more for being in the group traffic and so um he's a versatile musician who's done a lot of stuff and people prefer one note ponies people who are known for one note things and and do only one thing and he's done a lot of um different kinds of stuff and um he's more of a one note pony nowadays but back in the day he he did a lot of um interesting stuff and he's, um, you know, known more for the groups that he was in, even though he's been a solo artist for as long or not longer than the groups he was in. Yeah, uh, I was just looking him up just to make sure, so I wouldn't sound stupid. Um. He was inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with Traffic. That's cool. And I think the Spencer Davis group got inducted too. He was 17 years old and wrote Gimme Some Lovin'. Yeah, yeah. He was a young guy back then. And he was also in Blind Faith with Eric Clapton yeah. and Ginger Baker, uh, which is a great album. Um, Have you heard it? Oh, yeah. I love that album. Oh, yeah. I Can't I Find My Way Home. When I was about six. I love Traffic. I love anything Steve Winwood's done. I love his solo work. I love Back in the High Life. I love fucking his originals. I like all his albums, dude. There's not one Steve have Winwood. You heard, have you heard his first album? What was that? Just called Steve Winwood with the song Hold On. Yes. Oh, okay. I love him. I got his four CD box, his box set of his whole career. It has everything in it, but it's I have it digitally. I don't have it on CD, but it's really good. That's cool. I could send it to you in Dropbox if you have room, but it's really good. I, I'd be into it. Yeah, I love Steve Winwood. I I got I actually got into him with uh, uh, Back in the High Life again with Back in or Bring Me a Higher Love with Shaka Khan in the background. And my, my favorite song off that album is Freedom Overspill with Joe Walsh playing the slide. Yeah, I like the album Roll With It a lot. Oh, that's a great album, too. Just roll with it. It's fucking funky and positive. Like He made some great albums, man. So talented. He needs more. He needs more fucking fucking. He needs to be recognized. Yeah. I'm and wondering. um with Steely Dan, um yeah, with Steely Dan, I'm like, um there's <laughs> there's about four different albums that I could pick from. Um it depends upon what style you might be more into. Or do you want something a little more slick and jazz? or something a little more hard rocking or something a little more well known dude i like katie lied i like something Aja. a little bit of everything i like everything they done so you could pick any album except that two against nature i didn't like that album that much yeah but, uh, um, i haven't that, heard it much so i'm not lying i haven't really heard it so but but no no i i, I wouldn't pick that one either like i like all her albums dude i got katie lie and aja on uh, vinyl I like those two albums, and I like all of them. I I have, you know which, how I got into Ste- you know how I got into Steely Dan. Which I was two albums were you saying? Asha and Katie Lied. I like both those I, albums. Oh wow! Yeah, I 
those are great. I used to have them on vinyl. I have on vinyl, but you know how I got into Sealy Dan? How? I needed to pick another CD in Columbia House to get my 12, and I picked that one. And then out of all, I don't remember what else came with them, but I played that one the most. I love that one, dude. Huh. There's it an just, album by um um it's their greatest hits. I loved it. There was there was an album that um every time that I would get the album, there was like Michael Shreve. Mm -hmm. He was the drummer from Santana, the original drummer. And he did an album called Stiletto. And I wanted to hear it. And every time that I thought that I found a copy, either the album wasn't in it or it was in bad condition or whatever. And then so finally I found a CD of it. And I thought I finally got to hear it. And then when I came home, it wasn't that album. It was an album by Vangelis called The City. But I heard it and I loved it. And then finally I found a copy of Michael Shreve's Stiletto and I got it and I heard it and I went, I like Vangelis' The City a lot better. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, but, um, but yeah, Michael Shreve, He's worked with Andy Summers and with um, Klaus Schultz, who you might not know of, but we won't do a Klaus Schultz album because he's more electronica. And that's a totally different realm than you're into. But um, but but it's it's good music, but but yeah, you 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 wouldn't want to hear a whole song that's about 40 minutes that goes you know what my, I think my, I think over my, and over I think my favorite Steely Diane song is Dirty Work huh um I know that's one of the most well known but I do like Pig I love fucking Black um, Cow I, I like a lot of fucking songs man. I like every song they've done it's like not a um, song um, out there I don't like. David Palmer was the vocalist on Dirty Work. He um, wasn't on all of their stuff, but he was on that album on some of their songs. And then later on, he was, uh, he had like this curlyish golden hair. And if you see the live version of Do It Again, he's wearing like this oh, really. I love, I love Do It Again really lime green shirt and 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 he's um looking like a flamboyant guy but then later on he was in a group called the called waku and 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 he looked more like a regular guy kind of like a sammy hagar type of guy and the songs were a little more dark they had a little bit of snm kind of quality in the lyrics and then and the music was a little more hard hitting, like Bruce Springsteen, and and that stuff is hard to get. See, um, we haven't done a Bruce I had Springsteen an album. By them. We'd be, I, I'd be into doing a Waku album with you, if if you're into it. That had David Palmer from Steely Dan, but it's not going to sound like Steely Dan. That's cool, but you know what? Have you ever heard uh, Shaw and Blades, Tommy Shaw and uh, Jack Blades uh, solo albums together? Shaw and Blades. Like Blades, Blades, and Shaw? Shaw and Blades. It's called Shaw and Blades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, it's Shaw and Blades. Oh, my, I haven't and Blades. heard it. Let's see if you can see it. That's the album right there. But I don't know if you can see it. Uh, I, I, I can find it. It's called Influence. They do all okay, these. Okay, Shaw and Blades Influence. Yeah, it's Shaw, and they do Dirty Work. Huh. It's do they really do it good? a good version. Huh? They do it good? Yeah, it's mostly acoustic. It's mostly an huh. acoustic album. It's really good. They do uh, Merry Go Round, a song called Merry Go Round. They do uh, like a Simon and Garfunkel song. It's really fucking is good. Is the Merry Go Round song, is that um, Motley Crue or Wild Man Fisher? It's not Motley Crue. Let me, let me see what songs are on there. Okay. They do Summer Breeze. 
California, right. California Dream It, The Sound of Silence, um, hmm. Dance With Me, Your Move by Yes. Oh my God, they're doing Dance With Me, the Orleans shit. Yeah. Uh, Fuck. You know what? The guys from Orleans originally, they were in a group called Buffalongo. And then they had the guitar player, John Hall, who's like a cool Larry Coriel style jazz mm -hmm. rock guitarist who did kind of singer songwriter stuff, but with really cool jazz stuff. And you think, hell, they get together, they're going to be fucking smoking. Instead, they do dance with me. It's like, it would be like if Jimi Hendrix did um um don't cry now by <laughs> melissa manchester it's that different i love the first uh no that's not melissa manchester i think it's melissa you, etheridge you like you like um no don't i don't like melissa, now no i don't okay thank you well also they did time of the season i said your move by yes they did i am a rock they did lucky man they did sound of silence California Dreaming, and it wasn't merry-go-round, it was On a Carousel. On a Carousel. That song. I don't know that song. And for what it's worth, you know from what it's worth. Yeah, so they, they, they did a basic thing of 70 that songs. wasn't too adventurous. Well, they did 70 songs. Yeah, yeah, stuff that everybody would know. Well, your move, nobody really knows that. Well, I am a no, rock. No, 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 everybody knows Maybe you don't because you were. I like, love yes. I know it because it's yes. Come on. I'm a huge yes fan of all eras. Which which song of yes did they do? Your move. What? Your move. That's the most basic shit that they could do. Well, they did acoustic, so it's easy to do an acoustic. Yeah, I know. It's like um. Oh. I'll listen to it, but unless they do it in a totally different way, I'm going to think that they're just just milking the basic stuff that people who are dumb and young don't know. Well, the thing is, I like them because I love their harmonies together. I love how they sang in Damn Yankees. And this is kind of acoustic. And they did an album before this of all original songs called My Hallucination, which is really good. It's a rocking album. I had that one I on think CD. that I heard that and I like that. My Hallucination. I love that. Oh, new Night Ranger album's coming out. I'm like, yeah. Love it. <laughs> and new Styx album's coming out too. I'm like, yeah. They should go on tour together so that those two could get up and sing open for themselves and do damn Yankee songs and bring Ted up. <laughs> that'd be awesome having sticks and night ranger on tour together and then fucking sean blades open for those bands and then they bring up and they do damn yankees and her solo stuff that'd be amazing i guess not for you i see that look on your face <laughs> i i i would rather hear lee rittenauer you know <laughs> you know that, that guitarist who did the song Mr. Suitcase. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's that's his big um song. And, I don't know that and if song. He, huh? I don't know it. You should. It, it, it's it's in dollar sections and record stores. Well, dollar sections don't exist anymore because there's no big record stores out there. Every album that's a dollar now is 15. It goes da da. Are you there, Mr. Suitcase? Da, 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 da. You know that one. No. <laughs> All but right, then maybe because you don't buy jazz albums. Uh, and we, and fucking, uh, I just found out Cheap Trick is playing in August, headlining. I'm like, yes. And Blue Oyster Cult is opening for them. Oh. I thought you liked Blue Oyster Cult. They're okay. Everybody's but, raving but about their new album. Is, you don't even go to, you don't go to see any of the new artists. Yes, I got tickets for the Black Crows with. I'm talking about 
people who aren't that well known in regular clubs. Well, you know who's opening for the Black Crows is Dirty Honey. They're, they're, they're still kind of well known. I'm not talking really. about. You know, they don't have a record deal. They released their album independently, dude. They did it. I know. It's like I was talking about the other day on a, on a post saying Metallica should go out and take new bands with them. And they said they were agreeing with me. They should take out like a, a new band and an established band that was in, they got influenced. Like we were saying that Armored Saint should open up for them and then bring a newer band out with them also. Or bring out like, uh, I don't like the band, but uh, what's that band? Fucking like that, that one dude with the high voices in that pl- did that album, Melissa. You mean the um, the King Diamond, the, the, the group, the 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 Personal um, Fate, the one with I believe in love. Oh, I believe in da da. Oh, I believe in huh? Merciful you Fate. Know? They said they should bring out Merciful Fate or King Diamond and then have Armored Saint with them also. Oh, I I, I was thinking instead, um, the group called um. There, there, there's a group where, 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 where um, the I forget like the outside or the out, out, not the outfield, but um, the outfield's dead, dude. The guitar player and the singer died. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm talking about. Um, give me, well, it doesn't stop give, people give, from doing a band. Give, the drummer give, give, will come out with somebody. <laughs> give me, give me um, a moment. I, I'm, I'm going to look. Um, well, it's like the outfield will get resurrected by the drummer, bring a new bass player and a new guitar player in a band. And call oh, the darkness. I hate the I'm darkness. <laughs> oh, you hate them? Oh, God. But the thing is, I think that's, have... that's who I was thinking of because of the high voice you said. But Bob Reed, uh, when he was on the podcast, he gave us a darkness song and that out, that song was really good. I just don't like that where they go. <laughs> I hate that shit. Oh my god, but that song he gave us, the track of the week was really good. And I, I was meant to look into it and I never did. I feel sorry, Bob. Well, he's not my friend on Facebook, anyways. I posted too much and irritated him. Sorry, Bob. Oh well. I don't have it. I'm out of work until my job calls me back. So what else do I have to fucking do? I don't post politics anymore, really rarely. Hey, a lead went black. I yeah, that's because my um Yeah. All it's right, just, man. Just I'm my I think we um, should we should end it right now and tell everybody to fuck off and have a good day. Okay, fuck off and have a good day, everybody. Later, guys.